see what happens. Survival of the fittest. May the odds be forever in your favor. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful people. It is a drizzly, wet day. It Supposedly, is. we're supposed to get a bunch of rain in, I don't know, like an hour or so, something like that. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, but they've been threatening tons and tons of rain all weekend, and we've just got enough to make mud. We've got like maybe half an inch. I think that's all we've got is half yeah. an inch. So, rather than get to stay out there and work on my, uh, my foundation that I've been yes. building for our addition, I'm going to take today and we're going to have kind of a down day and work inside. Yeah. And so I still get to play in the dirt. Okay. But not that dirt. Not the, not the red clay. All right. You want to explain what we're doing? So we are starting some seeds today. So we're a little bit behind for onions. So we'll start onions and some leeks and then peppers because you kind of want to start peppers a little bit early to have yes. time for them to get going. So. That's uh, nothing crazy. We're not gonna go like all out starting everything <laughs> right now. It's still way too early, but we do have some stuff that we need to start. So that's what we're going to do today. So if you remember last year's garden, we failed miserably in the onion department. Uh, we planted them out. Like we started them from seed just like normal and they were doing okay. We ended up letting them get way too lanky in the trays yeah. underneath the grow lights. And when we planted them out, they just did terrible. And then a late frost finished them off. I mean, we got a harvest, but it wasn't it wasn't a great harvest. So. Yeah. Uh, I would say maybe only about 20% of what we had started actually made it to maturity, yeah. which is kind of a bummer. Right. But we're going to try again this year. Yeah, every year is different. So. so for the onions, I need our super small trays. Yes, and uh, same for the leeks Same as for well. the leeks. So we can, we can double up in... In yeah, we, trays, we can we, we can put the leeks in the the onion plug trays. Yeah. Peppers, that'll be like a regular tray, mm -hmm. and then that's, that's more peppers. peppers. Yeah. Okay. So we're doing lunchbox peppers, which are sweet. Our cachucha peppers, and then some jalapenos and Anaheim's and bell peppers. So. Which uh, bell peppers we get a lot of mileage out of. Yeah, pretty pretty simple. I think our motto for this year is like keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we have the home edition to worry about and we got a baby to worry about and the baby's gonna show up around about planting time probably yeah yeah we uh we we're setting our expectations for the garden pretty low this yeah. year so we're just gonna plant what we can plant yeah and whatever else happens happens i'm gonna go out and grab some seed trays put some potting soil in them okay. and then i guess i'll be back all right now the question is where did i stash my seed trays i've got some down in the greenhouse and i've got some stashed in the well house. I've got stuff everywhere. A lot of my planting stuff kind of stays up here around my little nursery area. Maybe they're around the other side. Hey, where'd you come from? She just popped out of nowhere. She's like, hey, my people are out. All right, here are my small seed trays. These are like little, they're not even one inch. They're like three quarter inch plugs, real teeny tiny. I actually really like these for starting onions. By the time the onion is ready to graduate out of these, you can just pluck it out and plant it. And it doesn't take a whole lot of potting soil. Like I just, I really like these, tra these trays. So all of this stuff kind of got evicted from the greenhouse. We were doing some stuff in there and I just shoved it right here months ago. And there's where it sits. And then I had a wagon full of loofahs and gourds and stuff. And those got dumped on the ground because someone had needed the uh, wagon. I'm going to get these filled back up with fresh potting soil. And I'll find some more trays, some smaller, or uh, I guess bigger than this, for uh, the peppers. I need my hands. i got to set the camera down. need any in that one. Okay, let's see. This one's actually too rotten to use. That one? Yep, that one's too rotten to use, so we'll use this one. That one? Okay, now we fill that one up. Can I fill it up? Uh, just help plant. Yep. All right, you 
to do onions first? Yes, let's do that. Past couple years, we have been growing in these, uh, I believe this is a hundred count? 120, I think. Or is it 200? No, it's a 200. Oh, it is 200. Uh, yeah. These little trays with the little, you know, it's like a three quarter inch square. Little bitty square. We can fit 200 in each tray. I don't know about you guys, but 400 onions is a lot of onions. It is. So we might do, uh, I don't know, eh, eh. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, 400 onions is not. Yeah, well, if you actually like pay attention to how much you eat throughout the year, and I'm talking everything, your dried onions, your powdered right. onions, your all whatever, all of it, it's a bunch. Yeah. So. I mean, even if we use like one onion a day, that's you need 365 onions. onions. So, <laughs> so 400 is really not, uh, and these are not all going to germinate and, you And know. they're not all going to make it to, you know, good bulb size. Right. So, yeah, we're we'll just going to. We're gonna do at least a tray because we got leeks too. So uh, leeks are one of those things I never ate growing up. I didn't even know what a leek tasted like. I only knew that they were some weird onion-looking thing at the store. Yeah. And we just recently started eating leeks, and they are oh, delicious. We love them. Like we love, I love them. them. So they're so good. Every year we've added leeks to the garden. Uh, we end up eating them, and yeah. they freeze really well. And you can pull them out and throw them in like soups and whatever you're cooking. They're great. And they're quiche. just they're great. Yeah, yeah. great in quiche. So. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna grow some more leeks. Alrighty. We use pencils to poke our holes for the onions because it just seems to work the best. I forgot, last year I ran all of our potting soil for these trays through a sieve. Oh, that's right. I was thinking it was kind of chunky. It's wood chippy. Yeah. So the potting soil we use is the uh, Happy Frog. Happy Frog from, what was what it called? The oh, Fox remember. Farm? Yeah. The Happy Frog from Fox Farm. We've been pretty happy with it. Mm -hmm. I think they do sell a potting mix, like I a, like a they, seed yeah. starting mix. They've got a couple different um, This is just their generic potting mix, and it is kind of woody. It does have some chunks of wood. Yeah, and it seems to differ batch to batch. Yeah, some batches are more woody. So maybe just keep that in mind if you're starting small seeds. Yeah. Okay, these are saved seeds from our white onions that did really well. These every, are, every year we planted them, they've done well, except for last year. Yeah, but these are seeds from 2021. So, we'll see. They're kind of old. For me. Ooh. I don't know if these seeds are still viable. Yeah. They're really shriveled. Hold out your hand. One seed per hole. Go down one row, and then the next row. Leaks in the rest? Mm -hmm. okay. I didn't realize this was our saved seed. Mm -hmm. That we didn't, uh, what's the word? Went out? Uh, yeah. Since I'm not sure on these, I'm going to plant a couple per yeah. hole. So come to find out, I don't really like starting seeds. Me neither. <laughs> I'd much rather just like plant them in the ground. Ta da! Alright, what do we tell them? Grow! Grow! Uh, everybody say hello to our volunteer tomato! So, this, <laughs> this was a uh, pepper that. Turned into a tomato? Well, <laughs> I guess it had tomato seeds in its compost. Yeah. So, I've just kind of let it do its thing. I'm not real. It doesn't matter. It's doing it great. Do its thing. These peppers died back to the roots and they're starting to come back. Those are um, your chili teppins? The, yeah, these are the chili teppins. They uh, might or might not have gotten frozen. Now the question is... Where do we put them? Where do I put them? Uh, these have not done very good since I brought them in here. Those are peppers? Yeah, that's like a habanero. These are... Uh, Cayennes. Cayennes that I wasn't sure the seeds were any good. And so I chitted the seeds and every single seed came up. So each one of these has like two dozen little pepper plants that are all starting to come up. Yeah. Get to go under that one. Guess I can turn on some more lights now. And then these will have to move. So we've got one more tray for peppers, so we can put that one up there. Yep. All right, let's start with our California Wonders because those are our bread and butter. Bread and butter. <laughs> uh, I, I have never really liked bell peppers since we've been growing bell peppers and we have them like throughout the year we freeze them yeah bell peppers are like 
They're great. Yeah. Like Philly cheesesteak in the mm -hmm. middle of winter is like how many seeds oh. we have. Yeah, just kind of like just fill up most of the plants or the seeds. We have maybe <clears throat> about two dozen seeds. Okay. And they are packed for 2019. I know. So I'm going to double up every single hole. We have so many seeds. I decided we're not buying new seeds this year. Our actual plan, our thought, my thought was actually I might just take a bunch of seed packets, like old seed packets, mix them all together, throw them in the garden, see what happens. Survival of the fittest. May the odds be forever in your favor. <laughs> early? Early. Early wonder? Early, early jalapenos. Early jalapenos. Okay. Santa Fe Grande. Just one row. Probably. Not Satan Fe. Santa Fe. <laughs> Satan Fe. They're not that spicy. <laughs> Alright, I got lunchbox peppers. I'm gonna do the rest of this packet. Okay, and then these ones I saved seeds from our lunchbox peppers last year, so we'll do a few of those. Those are beautiful seeds. Aren't they beautiful seeds? Those are ones you say? Mm hmm Kachuchas, do we have yep. naturalized or... Yep. Okay. So these might be crossbred? Yeah, they could be. Okay. So we actually saved seeds from our uh, kachucha peppers that we really, really like. Good luck finding kachucha peppers. Um, well, it, they're a bunch of different names. Yeah. So I believe Johnny's has them as like Mad Hatter or something like yeah. that. There's, yeah, there's a bunch of different names. We haven't grown other ones that look like them. Like, I would be curious, like, yeah. order some Mad Hatter seeds and grow them and see if they're kachuchas. Right. But the people that gave us these told us they were a Cuban pepper called kachucha. We ate them. They, I mean, they gave us a couple bags of peppers. We ate them. We loved them. So saved seed from them. Planted them. Have By been, far, yes. they, they are our favorite pepper. Yes, uh, they're not very spicy at all, but they got a little, they got a little, little bit, of, bit kick. of kick. Yeah. Well, these we saved seed from one of the various kachucha plants, and there was other peppers growing right next to them. Right. We had buena mulatas. We had Thai dragons. Yeah, Thai dragons. Yeah. We had all sorts of other spicy peppers growing around them. So they might or might not be cross pollinated. And if they are, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. We might wind up with a slightly spicier kachucha. Right. So, you can go here. Those two? Yeah. Okay. And 12 plants each. Should be good. All right. All right, last ones we're doing today is Anaheim's. These are just a good all around chili. And then we will do poblanos, but we actually just bought starts at the nursery last year because we didn't need that many and I didn't want to take up the space for starting seeds. It was kind of last minute. Yeah, so we just bought them at the nursery and they did great. Like they did fantastic. So it's like, you know what? We'll just do that again this mm -hmm. year. It's all good. Just a little bit easier. <laughs> and that will round us out in peppers. The poblanos will because you got your cayennes going. Mm -hmm. And so unless there's like some crazy peppers that you want to do. That should do it for us. Those bird's eye chilies, the uh, chili teppins, mm -hmm. that's going to be my hot pepper this year. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed those uh, last year, and they were just a couple peppers grown in pots. I'm going to grow those in ground and let them really go crazy. They don't need the light until they're... I mean, the warmth works, but that whole little shielded cabinet thing stays warm. Yeah, actually, like, if anybody is wanting to set up like a pretty low budget uh, grow operation, uh, some thermal blankets and a uh, cheap shelf. Yeah. And then, you know, the lights. Yeah. I think uh, the lights were like 30 bucks a piece at Lowe's. Alrighty. There okay. we go. Grow. Grow. Okay. Now, next on the agenda for today, this not so rainy, rainy day, I have a bunch of limes. Pretty sad looking limes. Pretty sad looking limes. We are part of an Azure Standard Drop, and for those of you who aren't familiar, it is a bulk distribution service. They're a family owned company, but they do bulk food. Um, it doesn't all have to be bulk. You can get smaller amounts, but 
for our family we wind up buying bulk how it works is you place your order and then on a big semi truck with all the other members your orders come together on pallets and um, everybody helps unload the truck and then you know you disperse with all your food every now and then they will have things that they're selling off the truck because a member at a previous drop either refused it or they didn't pick it up or you know something happened to where like they, they don't wanna take the stuff back because it's just gonna go in a landfill. So they sell it off a truck for a discounted price. Well, these limes were one of the things that was available at our last drop this last Friday. Wait, and I was like, what? you know what, I'll take them. They're not in the best <laughs> Well, shape. I, I can see why a previous drop, someone refused them. She did refuse them. I, yeah. I would be kind of burnt. Yeah. Um, I mean, like that, that's obviously, that froze. Right, and um, she was gonna preserve them these are not preserving quality. No. Like doing like the salt and yeah. packing it in a jar and kind of thing. So um, my plan with this, I was like, I'll take them. I can use them. We're going to juice them and put it in the freezer and then we'll have lime juice available. I'll keep a couple of the ones that still look decent for fresh eating. But for the most part, we're just going to get these frozen up. So they're uh, uh, most of them are pretty sorry looking. They are. Limes are delicious. We love limes. Yes. Um, they add we, so we, much to Come on. Like where we're from? Right. We love citrus. Yes, like citrus we do. is always good. And we so really do. even in the sad state this is in, we can use it. We can still use it. Yeah. They we can we waste. can pull out a, a a frozen chunk of lime juice and add it to tacos, you know, exactly. like right. it's nice to have lime juice on hand. All right. Let's uh get squeezed. We have a juicer. We do have a juicer. I'm not gonna use a juicer actually. Why? Because I don't like using a juicer. I find it faster for me to use a fork. I cut them open, use a fork, stab the insides, twist it around, and I do it over a strainer into a bowl or a measuring cup. That's just how I like to do it. No, I have a juicer. I don't need a juicer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like using the juicer. But if dad wants to use the juicer, he can do that. I might I might use the juicer. Okay, we have a hand squeezy juicer and we have the twisty juicer. Oh, I forgot about the hand squeezing yeah. juicer. See, just so much faster. That is pretty fast. It's messy. But it's, it's not much messier than any of the other options. Before you throw those in there, let me squeeze them. Okay. I'll use the squeezy thing. Okay. I bet you I got most of it. You probably got most of it. Like I said, they're not the juiciest either. Like some of these are pretty good. Okay, you got three or four drops out of it. <laughs> Is that making your teeth sharp? <laughs> That's a funny face. <laughs> there is the rest of the limes. Mm -hmm. uh, these are pretty dry limes. Like out of 10 pounds, that's all the juice we got. Yeah. It's kind of skimpy. It's a little skimpy, but not wasted. Nope. All right, we, uh, we almost made it. Ran, <laughs> ran out of room with like three limes left, so. These, uh, these are the super cubes. They've kind of been going around on the internet for a little bit. They're just a silicone ice cube tray. You can get various sizes. Um, these are the two tablespoon, one ounce size. I really love them for juice. They work great. They're the only ones I have. I might get bigger ones later, but they work awesome for juice. So yeah, <laughs> ignore the top, they're playing in the water. <laughs> So I just really, I do the two for the full two tablespoons because that's usually what we'll use anyways. That's probably about a lime's worth of juice. And we got out of that whole box, it's a little over a quart, so not awful. And considering like we'll use one of these for a meal probably. One ice cube? Yeah. All right. And then what I like about the super cube, not sponsored y'all, just, <laughs> just saying. It's a cool product. It's a cool product. Um, I, they have with a lid, so I don't know some ice cube trays do that anyways, but. So you're not having to worry about, you can stack them on top of each other, so. Put it out there. That is a cool feature. Yeah. All right, so these are the only two trays that I have. So what I will do with the rest of these probably is put them in like pint jars, not filled all the way up. Give them, you gotta give them space to expand, but put them in pint jars and freeze them. And then that way I can use them for if we wanna make limeade or, you know, yeah. marinate some meat or something yep. like that. Little jars instead of pint jars. I don't want to have too much to use at a time. Lime. All right, lime, two twenty-four. I swear in. Because we're in February. And it's twenty twenty-four, y'all. So we got two ice cube trays yep. and lime. four pints. No. Half pints. Half pints. Mm -hmm. Two pints. Two pints. Yeah. Cool. That wasn't too bad. Yep. All right, we're finally getting some rain. 
It's five o'clock. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I've lost an entire day waiting for the rain. You did, actually. You could have gotten stuff done. <laughs> yep. All right, so what's for dinner? Pork chops. So these are like itty bitty teeny <laughs> tiny <laughs> guinea hog pork, pork chops. Guinea hog pork chops, they're so tiny. But there's like, I don't know, like 12 or something in there. Because it's gonna take that many. <laughs> So that's bone-in pork chops yeah. from a American guinea hog, mm -hmm. and it was a pretty small guinea hog. Yeah. But that's that's literally the entire loin section cut into chops. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are tiny. <laughs> Very tiny. What they lack in size, they make up for in flavor. Oh, so I'm gonna get these seasoned up, and I'm gonna sear them in a pan, and then I will pour some honey mustard sauce on them, and pop them into a 400 degree oven to finish them off. They're a little thick, so they'll take a little bit, but they shouldn't take too long. Uh, if you would like this recipe, you can find it in my cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> nice little segue. <laughs> my pork, I did, I did include the honey mustard pork chops in the pork cookbook that we put out last month. Yeah. Last month. So I'll drop a link for that for you guys, for those of you who might want it that haven't bought it yet, but <laughs> let me get these going. Good old SPG, mm -hmm. salt, pepper, garlic. Super simple and tasty. And this pork does not need much. I mean, we're gonna put the honey mustard sauce on it because we like that, but. Honey mustard is delicious. It is, but the pork itself is so good that it doesn't need a lot. We're gonna fry our pig and some cow. <laughs> <laughs> fry our pig and some cow. Yep. We get one more, if there's one more. How good is your game of Tetris? That good. You got it. There we go. I don't know if you guys heard that. <laughs> Let me step closer so I can so I can hear. That one had a bone sticking out. Yeah, it said the butcher was sloppy. He's cute. I'll keep them. <laughs> oh yeah, that's nice. Now the question will be, can I flip them all and still make them fit? <laughs> oh, that's a good color. This is some wild rice that I actually made for dinner last night that will go good with pork chops. So, I'm gonna put that as well. I'm just gonna reheat that. These are my favorite. I know. Like, I could eat that whole quart He's of green right. beans by myself. He's not joking. I'm gonna put some bacon grease in here. Is that okay with you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Bacon grease. Bacon grease. Oh, and butter. All right. Woo. Okay. Just to be mm -hmm. And then I put my sauce in. Let that simmer for a minute. And then I'm actually going to dot it with butter. And we're going to put the pork chops back in there. I'll pop them in the oven until they are done. See, I'm not gonna be able to get them back in the way I had them. Nope. Messed them up. I did. Should have numbered them. I should. Yeah, that's right. I'll just get a sharpie and number it. Number it. Gotta get real good at Tetris. All right. Two. Oh. And last one. Oh. 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 There we go. Got it. Got it. Oh, wait. There's oh, one. Oh. Poking out. Got okay. It. There we got it. Put all that juice back in there because that's good. You can go in there too. That's good stuff. Turn that out. Okay. Done. Done did. Oh, All right. <laughs> Do you want to? Uh, start with one. Okay. I can always come back. That's true. And then it'll be better the longer it sits in its juices. It will. Although I'm about to steal a lot of those juices. That's here. That's good. Alright. Alright. Alright, pork chops are always a hit. Mm -hmm. They uh they are quite tasty. <laughs> I almost feel like I don't know, maybe adding honey mustard that's not cooked, so it's more mustardy. Yeah. The sauce is really good, it's just Cooked. Not quite as pungent. Not yeah. as pungent. Yeah. I like the bite of a good yeah. mustard. You could just serve it with extra mustard. I might do that. Yeah. There's there's some more pork chops up there. Maybe I'll do that for lunch tomorrow. There you go. 
All right, that's gonna do it for us for today. Mm -hmm. Looks like the rain is done. So much for a giant rainstorm today. Hey, you know what, that's okay. Maybe it'll actually like dry out for tomorrow. I hope so, I hope so. We got a bunch of digging we still gotta do, so. Yeah. Stay tuned to the end of the week video. Uh, we're just gonna compile everything and post it at the end of the week and we'll do a dedicated uh, house building build project. Recap, yeah. yeah, it'll be a build recap. So, stay tuned for that. That's gonna do it for us for today. So we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.